In the previous video in this series, um, we looked at buying second-hand planes. Um, I said the next uh, video would be about refurbishing those second-hand planes. And I've been thinking we spent rather a lot of time on planes, so it might be getting a little bit boring. Um, so I thought we'd try something different. <clears throat> what I thought we'd do, instead of uh, refurbishing planes, we'd have a look at one of the really the most important things in woodwork. Like can't overstress this really. After sort of sharpening and one or two techniques and things, then face side and face edge is absolutely elementary in woodwork. I really can't, it, we, see, I'm quite keen on the idea. Um, <clears throat> it really sort of saves a lot of errors and mistakes and, and um, sort of puzzling over how pieces go together and things like that. So good face edge discipline and notation discipline are really essential to uh, getting on in, in woodwork really. So let's have a little look at uh, what I'm talking about. To start let's look at this very simple thing. This might be a frame, might have mortise and tenons in the corners or possibly domino or something like that in the corners, a door frame perhaps. Um, and the very first thing you do when preparing the wood for this would be to establish your reference surfaces, which are your face side and face edge. So I'd start by planing up an, a face, which I know is flat both ways, that way and that way. Uh, mark up the face side marking on it, so a loop like that. And be fairly bold about it, don't sort of do little tiny ones. Um, and I'll do that on every piece and I'll also plane adjacent to that face, I'll plane, place, plane the face adjacent to the face side, I'll plane, plane a face edge which I know is flat and also square with the face side and I'll then mark that with a little cross. Now whatever mark, you don't have to use a loop and a cross like I do, you could use whatever, to, whatever notation you want. And I'll do that on each piece and then I can use those markings for those reference surfaces for doing all my measuring from marking from now on. So if I wanted to dimension this piece to a particular dimension, 50mm or something like that, I could mark with a marking gauge perhaps, working from this face edge, or if I had a plane of thickness, or I could run it through uh, a plane of thickness with, from that face edge. But all my working would be from this edge. And once I've established, you know, everything is two dimension, you know, working from those face side and face edges, I'm just going to mark face side and face edge on all the other pieces. I'm just marking them up. I'm assuming, you know, I should really be checking the square, but for the sake of this video, I'm just doing it willy nilly. So when, when I think about, um, jointing up the door, I want to arrange for all the face sides to be one way, either up or, or down, and all the face edges to be on the inside. Um, because we want, uh, we want to know that we're working into uh, a known surface. Um, we don't know that the surfaces on the outside, or the opposite surfaces to the face edge, whether they're square and true. We know the face edge is true, so we know we can joint into those that face. Um, <clears throat> if we were to, to joint into a face we, that wasn't true, possibly, um, then we might find a situation, which I'm sure you've encountered at some point, where you, you put the joint together and it sits down nicely on one side, but it doesn't on the other side. The shoulder doesn't meet on the other side because the, the face isn't square. Whereas if you work from a known reference or face side, then that shouldn't be the case. And all your uh, marking would also be from those faces. So if I wanted to mark up for a tenon on the end here perhaps, uh, the shoulder of a tenon, I'd do all my squaring from these two faces, the face side and the face edge. So 
I'll start off with the stock of the square on that face edge. Mark round, turn the square round so it's now against the face side. And come round, I'm still against the face edge here with my stock. I'm going to have to turn it round again so that I'm again against the face side. And if everything's correct, if I've established these references, these face side and face edge correctly, the lines should meet up where we come round together again. If they don't, then something's gone wrong. We need to investigate that. So we just looked at uh, marking uh, the shoulders uh, of, a, of a joint using face side and face edge in the square. Um, Comes possibly even more important when you actually come to mark out sort of like a mortise and tenon for actually marking the position of the mortise sort of across the across the width using a marking gauge. So <clears throat> this uh, shoulder we just marked out, I've actually marked onto it the, the position of the tenon there and there, and I can also square across the length of the mortise. Like that. <clears throat> now I want to, whoops. Now I want to use the mortise gauge to actually mark the position of the mortise in that direction across the width of the, the piece. Um, now, if I haven't got this mortise gauge set absolutely to the center, then if I don't mark from the same side on both pieces, then we will get a a discrepancy in the joint and when, when the joint goes together there'll be a step between one piece and the other. Uh, any inaccuracy in the setting of this will be doubled up if you don't work from the same face all the time. Um, <clears throat> so if it was just sort of half a millimetre out it would actually make the joint a millimetre out which is quite a significant uh, error. So you would always work with the with the um, stock of the, of the marking gauge against the face side. So when I mark the mortise, I'll work with the scissors of my face side there. I'll mark across like that. And then when I mark the tenon, I'll face side there. I'll mark round like that with the stock against the, the face side. And so on. Um, so you can see that the, 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 the sort of face side face edge concept is really really important for any accurate uh, measuring and marking and, and joint laying out. So I hope you can see the advantages of, of this. I do have students on, uh, on courses uh, who think I'm just being a bit OTT really and uh, obsessive about this and uh, they, they skip that bit and then later on things start to go a bit pear-shaped and they realise that you know it is quite important after all. Um, so to start with it helps you, helps you with accuracy. It means that everything should be plumb, everything should be running as it should be. The other thing it helps with is notation, which I'm going to uh, go into a lot more detail about on a, on a more complex piece. This is a rather simple uh, thing here, but just to introduce it, um, a lot of people um, tend to be very detailed in their notation, you know, so on this door they might write on here, this is the top left, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. This is the inside, that's, that's the outside. And it all gets terribly complicated and, and you tend to get confused. Now for notation on this, we could just use four numbers. Um, I have a convention that I always number from the top left, number one. And then I'll number the, the joint, the rail that's going into that, that end, number one. And then top right is number two. two. Bottom right is number three. Four, three, <laughs> and then bottom left is four. 
and four. So there's no confusion about that. You know which way these joints are going to go together. You know one and one is going to go together. You know four and four is going to go together. You know that it's going to go together that way rather than that way because we've, we know that the face edge is going to be on the inside. So you should be able to get away with just four numbers on this frame and know how the thing's going, going, going together. Things get, can get a little bit more complicated when there's more pieces involved. This is a very simple introduction. So let's have a look at something a little bit more complex. This is um, uh, a, a, like a side table. It's actually the prototype for a project in one of the projects in my book. Uh, and I've sort of set it up so it's, it's quite clear. You can see how the notation works. I wouldn't suggest you go marking uh, your face sign face edges in felt tip. But um, that's what I've done here, just to make things a bit clearer. And you can see, um, so I've, I've measured, I marked the, marked the legs. Well, I've got my face sign, face edge markings on the inside and facing up, um, because eventually we want to have a flat surface all around here for the top to sit onto. And then I've also marked the legs one, two, three, four. And we've got two joints in each leg, so we've got one and one, two and two, three and three, four, four. <clears throat> and you might say, well, how do you know that that, that rail doesn't actually get, go in that hole there, in that mortise there, and this one in here? Well, you can actually tell, because if this rail was put into there, then my face side marking would be on the outside and similarly if this one this one would have to then go in there and my face side marking would be on the outside and I, I know that that's wrong so I know automatically that um, that's the way those number one joints go together so I don't need to have eight eight numbers you know I've only got four numbers here I don't you know if you were, we were to do this one one two two three three four four five five and so on we'd end up with eight numbers and it will get a bit more complicated. It's very simple at the moment, as long as you follow this notation. The other thing is that uh, when we come to put the curvature on the rails, we know automatically where it's going to go because we know it's on the opposite side to the face edge. And similarly, these legs are actually tapered down here uh, on the inside. So we know that we need to, when we come to do the tapering, we know that we'll be tapering on these two faces, the face side and the face edge. So it just makes things a lot more simple, rather than having lots of different sort of uh, markings to indicate what's going where and where the lines are going to go and where you're curving, where you're tapering and everything. Uh, <clears throat> and our next... <laughs> And I'll take you on to a slightly an even more complex uh, uh, arrangement and we'll see uh, how, how it works in, in, in that. One thing I would say is that um, you do need to be fairly bold about your marking. Um, I sometimes find people might make little tiny marks with a face side and face edge. It really defeats the point of it being there because they're, they're supposed to be obvious to avoid you making mistakes. And if you've got little tiny markings, it's a lot easier. To, to, to make mistakes. I've just zoomed in on this, this leg here because it's a good way of illustrating uh, the importance of, of the face eye and face edge in terms of, 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 of accuracy of, of jointing and, and the whole piece of furniture going together. If you imagine that, that if this wasn't square, you know, if we weren't actually using our face eye and face edge for this part here, imagine much exaggerated, say it was out more shaped like that, you know, I'm exaggerating things hugely here, but if you imagine that the joint was more like that, when we jointed into it, if we jointed in square to these faces, then these two rails here would be sort of splayed out. So when you try to put the 
you know, and you might have similar issues with other legs. When, when the, the, the piece of furniture goes together, you can have difficulties getting everything to come together. So that's quite a good in, um, illustration of how important face side and, and face edge are, you know, that having accurate face side and face edges and working to those uh, faces is. One of the things that prompted me to sort of, or maybe helped me to decide to, to do this video was that uh, last week I taught a bench making course and uh, there were two people on that course who who didn't like to follow this system that I, I'm explaining. They, they had the, the back left, top left, front right and all that sort of thing marking on their uh, pieces and uh, they met with some difficulties. It was their, their difficulties that made me think that uh, it, it would be a good subject for a video because I think a lot of people have this problem. And uh, anyway, um, this is actually the reason I've got into that. This is actually the undercarriage from uh, one of the benches that we make on the course. And I just wanted to show you because it's a little bit more complex than the, the table before. Um, and I just wanted to show you how, how, how it works to hopefully get you, give you an understanding of how useful this uh, face side, face edge and notation system is. So with this, I've, again, I've numbered the legs, but um, on this, there was a front and a back to this on the table before. The table could have been any, any way around. Um, but on this one, there was a front and a back because we're going to be, we, we drill the front uh, for some bench dogs uh, down, down the front here. So I would say that I would number this one for the back left, two for the back right, three for the uh, front right and four for the front left. Um, you, you don't have to follow that system, you could uh, choose any, any numbering arrangement, but uh, I, I find that's logical. Uh, and then I've got all the numbering according to that, so that rail is number one, that joint there, that joint, that joint there, it, rail is number, uh, number four. Similarly, down the bottom there, one, one. And as I said before, there's no risk of, of these going into the wrong place because if I put this one over there, then the face side will be on the outside. Um, but it does mean that I know when I come to drill for these bench dogs, I know that I'm, I want to um, be drilling on number three. Uh, assuming I'm right-handed and I want, I want the bench dogs to be on the right hand front end. Um, <clears throat> and also, it, it also means there's, there's no, you know, because I'm using this convention of, of, of my face edges all facing up, so the face edge on that is facing up, the face edge here is facing up. There's never any doubt about which way round the joint will go. Um, and we always know that we're going to be jointing into our faces. We don't end up with joints on, on this side, uh, which I'm sure so, um, yeah, uh, is a common problem. Um, so really, as I say, it, it it's just, just makes life so much easier. Uh, now, when you first start with this system, you might thought, feel a little bit of like a fish out of water because you're so used to sort of these detailed numbering but I'm, I'm sure you do find that, uh, that you, you're constantly, <laughs> constantly looking at your, uh, your detailed writing on of your face, you know, um, back, back leg left, back leg right and all that sort of thing. You, you spend a lot of time reading your, reading your, your parts uh, whereas this, once you get used to it, it becomes second nature, you know, it's, it's just, there's no doubt about it with me, I, I, I just know how it goes together. And uh, as I say, once you get used to it, it is so easy. Uh, this face side and face edge concept is uh, quite useful in carcass furniture as well. Um, this is a, a very simple cabinet I'm working on at the moment. Um, uh, I'm, I've, I've biscuited it. I haven't actually fitted the back yet, but uh, just partly to make it clearer for you to see what's, what's happening. Um, <clears throat> and you can see uh, the notation that I've used. Uh, I've got my face side markings here, 
and they're all facing inwards so on the, on the sides it's on the inside and then on the, the these verticals here it's on the inside of those verticals and then we've got face side mark there and they're on the underneath of these these rails and on the rails they're pointing to the front and to the back whereas everything else everything is on the on the front here um, and the importance of it is, is it's not so much to do, to do with the accuracy, you know, uh, we talked about how it's, it's important to have good, um, uh, good, good, good face side and face edge, you know, it, uh, for accuracy because you know things are square and everything. It's more to do with notation to, for organising the parts because quite often you end up with quite a few parts like in, in this sort of case furniture, sort of fitted furniture and that sort of thing. And uh, you end up with problems with orientation. Now on this, basically what I've got is I've got these face markings and then I've just, on the, on the sides, I've just got an indication which is the top, and the top front. So here I've got top right, if you imagine looking at it from this direction, top right and top left. And then on the verticals I've got top right and top left. Um, and that's really all the notation I need um, because every, all the rest comes from the fact that we've got these face markings here, and one of the one of the big problems with uh, with case furniture and biscuiting and dominoing is you end up putting the joint in the wrong place. You know, you, you might biscuit biscuit on this side instead of that side. But as long as you've got you know which way you're working with these faces, then that shouldn't be an issue. So on on the uh, the sides here, I know I'm going to be biscuiting into this side. Um, and similarly, um, I know I'm going to be biscuiting into, the, into this, this part of the bottom, you know, not the other face. Um, the other uh, problem you can have with, uh, you know, biscuiting and dominoing is, is, is working from the wrong face. Um, if, you, if, you actually, if you haven't set it up so that you're actually working dead into the centre, quite often it's convenient to just use the, the default setting on the biscuit jointer, which is 10 10 millimeters from the fence. Um, so here I've, I've used that default setting. Let's see if I can take this to bits without it falling apart. Uh, I've used the default setting, and you can probably see there, I offer that up, that it's not actually right in the middle because it's 10 mil from the uh, from the top edge, uh, and it's an 18 mil uh, piece, so it's not central. And what happens is sometimes you you'll work with the fence on one, one side at one end and then at the other end you work with it on the other side and you end up with the joints that are offset. Uh, whereas if you've got the face marking you know which you, you're going to be working from one side or the other at either end uh, on this because we're wanting to get the top lined up with the edge of the, um, um, the sides and we, the faces on the underneath there we know we will we'll be putting the fence on the non-face side. Um, so just generally, it just makes makes life easier. It, 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 you might still make some mistakes if you try hard, but uh, it's a lot more difficult to, to make a mistake when you're using these face markings and, and, and getting organised around it. Um, so that's more or less it on, on the face side, face edge. Just a sort of a fairly brief explanation. Um, so it is an important concept within within the craft. One for accuracy's sake, you know, making sure you've got square, straight datum, um, and if you've got if you if your parts are square, the whole furniture should come out square eventually. And the other um, beauty of it is is in aiding you with orientation and notation of the parts as you're working. Um, if you're not using this this concept at the moment, then I'd, I'd, I'd urge you to have a go and see, see if it helps you with your woodwork. Because certainly uh, in the sort of my woodworking career, it's become absolutely essential part of, the, of, of what I do. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, if you feel like it and you can be bothered, then uh, it'd be nice if you could subscribe. There's a button around somewhere. Um, and if you have been, Thanks for watching.